Hey everyone, hey and welcome back to yet another episode of Battle Rap Resume. This is your host, Tom Quee. Thanks so much for joining me. Please follow the show at Battle Rap Resume. Please email me, battleratresume at gmail.com. I read those emails out on a, a sort of Patreon exclusive show. If you want to help to give back to the show, you can go onto our patreon.com forward slash Battle Rap Resume. You can listen to episodes early, stuff like Exploring Don't Flop Extra. Those episodes will come out about a month early on there. Just, just stuff like extra stuff, you know, just stuff people might be interested in. Uh, content wise, if you want to support the show, also please leave leave us a review on itunes please subscribe i appreciate we're now you know deep into the 60s of battle as a man you've heard me say this loads and loads of times but um i appreciate you all who are following and and just to help support the show but yeah my um my guest today uh you know a guest that i'm really really excited for like i love having obviously battle rap affiliated guests this guy's an established battle rapper in his own right he's um <laughs> uh, 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 of, <laughs> of, 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 i feel an affection for you pete slightly just because you're from Thank Wolverhampton. You. I'm, you. I'm, I'm from sutton coalfield there's that oh, kind okay. of you know that, that, that so we've of, got we've got that that, that midlander yeah. unspoken bonds or <laughs> dare not speak its name kind of thing going on okay good the wm man i mean luna has dub y no one yeah. really like you know him and matt have that cool sort of you know we don't have that wm doesn't really exist that way but yeah i'm excited to have you on the guest not only for that reason not only thank you man no no but i mean also just a kind of a kind of millennial renaissance man is that fair to say <laughs> like, yeah, i like that like let's go, let's your, your go battle you know you've done countdown we're going to get into all these yeah. things but you've uh, quite quite a various palette you've had pete i think that's fair to say yeah i kind of um have had a, a colorful life yeah up yeah. to this point battle rap being probably the uh, the strangest kind of little side road that that it's taken Mm. But we'll get to that in due course. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I'm sure, I'm sure. And, um, y- you know, we get to the point where there's there's another Peter Cashmore, uh, yeah, yeah. famous yeah. one, that I just yeah. thought we'd get out of the way just because, I mean, that must be annoying because there are quite a few of those it's, people. That, it's incredibly annoying. Yeah. Because it's, um, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not a particularly common name. And no. uh, as I've always said, it's kind of like, it's it's one thing to not be the most successful successful journalist in the world but to not even be the most successful journalist in the world with your own name is uh, is kind of is kind of humiliating but yeah the guy's worth about like 200 million yeah. 200 million quid we, we should say he, yeah he's kind of like a scottish uh, zuckerberg um, yeah he found mashable which yeah is kind of like a blog aggregator the, the funny thing is um in the last in the last few years i keep getting people I was getting people emailing me at work saying we'd like to um, we'd like to follow you out to Zurich to have lunch with us. Oh thinking shit! That, thinking that I'm the other guy. <laughs> it, got, it, got, it basically got to the point after about sort of five or six of these where I was just going sort of uh, yeah you know uh, give me the details and, uh, and the flight details and I'll see what I can do and then kind of saying uh, you've actually got the wrong Pete Cashmore. How right. did you get? How did you get my? The, the, the maddest one was one Saturday morning, about nine o'clock in the morning. I had CNN ring me at home on my mobile phone. <laughs> I don't know how they got my mobile oh number, my but I was I was hungover to fuck. Oh shit! And just going, yeah, thank you, but uh, you need to uh, oh. have a look with your researcher. Yeah. But shout out to the Pete Cashmore. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, even someone so famous as him could have those sort of mix ups. Yeah. You know, yeah. Not, that, not that it's because you're not famous, but it's just. I, I, I kind of like the idea that so, somewhere there's probably like a battle league in Lowestoft or somewhere that sent him an email <laughs> saying, uh, yeah, do you want to battle quack? Um, <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. So, you know. <laughs> That's a good thought, actually. I never thought of that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, has it got to the point where I've seen this with certain celebrities? Like, I saw this recently with uh, uh, Rob Thomas, who's quite an obscure. He was Matchbox 20s. Matchbox singer. 22, right. Yeah. 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 You're aware of the guy. Did, yeah. He did, did, did the track with Santana. He did. Smooth. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, supernatural yeah, yeah. hit. Yeah. That was uh, one of the biggest songs ever, I think, over in the US. It was yeah, a pretty, yeah, pretty yeah. cool song. Pretty sort of Nando's rock. But I mean, it's yeah. quite sort of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's definitely. Yeah, definitely. But anyway, he has the same name as some famous TV writer. And it was kind of, I went on one of their Twitters and it was like, I am not this guy. It literally yeah. says that in their bio. Like, I mean, did you, do you have that or are you not kind of, do you enjoy um, that? I, I have a lot of people, I have a lot of people following me thinking that, um, that I'm him. Right. Like at the moment, for example, um, and this completely freaks me out because I kind of thought that he would have figured it and, and, and dropped me, but I'm being followed by Tay Diggs. Right. T- As in the Chicago guy in um, various other, various other films and, and I think Tay Diggs 
I'd like to think that Tay Diggs is kind of like a fan of my work, but I suspect that Tay Diggs thinks that I'm the other, the other Pete Cashmore and hasn't quite twigged it yet. Right. Um, every now and then I do like Tay Diggs updates and just sort of like, uh, just to confirm that Tay Diggs is still following me. <laughs> and, uh, he's following 700,000 people though, I'm afraid. Oh, is he? Is, yeah, he's I'm one of just, those. Man, you're quick. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, I'm assuming it's, I'm assuming it's the Tay Diggs rather than, uh, you know, somebody pretending to be Tay That's Diggs. true. It might be a fan page. It was the first one that came up, but I mean, we've got a lot to talk about. Oh. We shouldn't get trapped into this yeah, Tay yeah. Diggs Twitter. Tay Diggs, out of here. Tay Diggs. You've had your time. Um, another thing that I want to speak of before we get into this battle game, yeah. um, your appearance on Countdown. Um, yes. I should say, sorry, let me refine that. Um, your incredible success on Countdown. Yeah. Um, you know, you had a great run here. I'm just going to read from um, an entry about you. Quite a long article from the... From, uh, and wiki, is this? From the Countdown Wiki. I, I was suspicious, Pete. Don't call, call me cynical. Did you write this? No, no, I did uh, The wow. first time you... If, if I'd written it, do you honestly think I would have used that photo? Mm-hmm. Because that ain't a flowering oh. photo, mate. <laughs> <laughs> How many photos are there of old Countdown, though, I guess? <laughs> Uh, well, that one was That's weirdly. That was from that was from the launch of the national Scrabble Championships. That photo got taken. Oh, two thousand and five. Um, yeah, yeah. Hmm. When I uh, the ravages of age were starting to kind of show themselves. So, if but, it, yeah. Sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah, I just I, I find this. I appreciate people listening to the show will be like, this is a battle rap show. But I just I don't know the fact that you're on countdown. Like, I'm not even this giant countdown fan. I just think it's very yeah. cool. You know, it is it is a really good game. So. um yeah, we'll just, we'll just sort of annotate this verbally then. So this is from Pete Cashmore on the Countdown Wiki. Pete Cashmore, known as Peter during his original series. Yeah. So what, what was the change? Did, um, did it come across do you know what? I, I honestly don't know. No. I don't know. I just uh, I went from being a Peter to a Pete. Okay, okay. Um, no idea. Pete, Pete feels a bit more, you know, l- nuts Yeah, magazine-y. approachable. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Definitely. Um, so we get to, uh, yeah, so uh, you were a champion of Series 35, so the game had been yep. around quite a while then. But like yeah. 20 years yet? Was it yeah, 80 yeah, that I mean, it started? It was, uh, it was 97. Yeah, that was 97, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it'd been going about 16 years by that point. Mm-hmm. But it was still in the old format. They've kind of like bumped it out to 45 minutes now, and there's more anecdotal stuff and more rounds, obviously. Uh, right. I was doing like the short form version of the game, and would actually kind of like to go back mm. and try out the long form because the the old skills are still there. <laughs> you still play, I see on Twitter, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. At, at Sweet Cashmore, if you want to basically <laughs> period, not the Mashable me, guy. See me boasting about the fact that I just got a nine letter word. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. Like, there's the talk of nines, isn't there? Like, that's what to yeah. be aimed for. That's a body bag of a sort of word round. Yeah, yeah, and it's appropriate. You know, you know, it's an impro- like an eight. What's an eight? But a nine, we know, we know what a nine is. And, mm, uh, mm, mm. Uh, so yeah, it all comes back to the guns. You apparently first appeared on Countdown the seventh of April, nineteen ninety-seven. Um, yeah. twenty-four. So quite young to be on the show, yeah. actually. Yeah. Know? So yeah. I don't know whether it was then, but it, it's sort of the age ranges, I think. But back then, I guess, was it more older people or was it still? Um, yeah, for the mm. most part, I was up against people in their like in their fifties and sixties. Alan um, Cannon was one of them that you beat. Alan Cannon was the guy that I beat first. That yeah. sounds like a fake name, like Alan Cannon. <laughs> yeah, actually. We, <laughs> like a wrestler here name. We, here we are again. <laughs> we're, we're, it's a great rapper name. I mean, it's like any relation to Pete Cannon. No, you know? no, no. Um, you won four more games in Series 35, including uh, three scores over 60. Yeah. yeah. Which which is pretty good. Someone that you lost to and then went on to face in the quarters, was it? Was was this Natasha Kersey? Uh, semis, yeah. Semis, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Natasha Kiersey. Wow, wow. Yes. And it's very cool because in some of the uh, article, it shows you words that were spelt and sort of like, you know, the um, the synonyms that you got, obviously the crucial conundrum, the, the T time T's or whatever. So you yeah. had, uh, the word is giant, then USDJ. And yeah. within one second, do you remember? You answered correctly. Yeah. Do you remember what you said? Yes, um it was adjusting. Adjusting, but yeah. The, um, <sighs> interestingly enough, little bit of behind the scenes gossip Please, here. Um, that's what we're here for. White, Whiteley, rest his soul, yep. had, um, had written down adjusted on his pad. So when I buzzed in and said adjusting, and he said, it's not adjusting, both me and the other dude 
were like looking at each other going, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so what you actually see in the final program, which I've, I mean, I've, I don't know where it is, you know, oh, is it on YouTube. I tried to I find I, it. I, I don't know. There is one of, there is one of my shows on, uh, on YouTube, mm. but it's not that one. Right. But, um, they, we had to basically go back and film it again. So all of the, <sighs> like by this pop, by this time I knew that I'd won. Mm. Um, because they were just like, we'll have to film it again, but Pete, you've won. And so there was this kind of really anticlimactic <laughs> thing of having to go back and, and film it again. Yeah. Uh, and, and me kind of pretend that I'm like really surprised and amazed about the fact that I've won when, of course, uh, I knew that I already had. Mm. But it was cool, though, because um, I did... Um, uh, you, you know what? This is probably me showing my age, but do you, have you seen the footage of when Pat Cash won Wimbledon? Um, I'm not really aware of that. Okay. Really. In, this is like in the mid 1980s so right, I'm okay. not surprised but when Pat Cash won Wimbledon he basically like climbed up through several rows of, of fans to where his parents were oh Nadal it, sort it, of did that didn't yeah he? okay yeah 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 modern and, um, millennial and you know the, the, the world kind of like melted and stuff and um, I did the same thing my parents were about six rows back in the in the crowd and um, I said to them like before we did the presentation thing I said like can I take my mic off for a second and they were like yeah and so I went off and um, went into the crowd to where my parents were and uh, hugged them and stuff and now the thing about the countdown audience is it's pretty much entirely pensioners yeah and they would god they just loved it uh, <laughs> oh you know good on you and, and uh, th- they were coming up to us afterwards but n- not talking to me talking to my mum and I'm there and she's going oh you, isn't he a lovely lad you must be so proud of him and I'm just I'm like I'm right here talk to me <laughs> You know, do, do not fear a conundrum, me. man. Yeah, do not fear me. And you, but, came, uh, you came back as well um, a few times, champion of champions. Champion of champions, runner-up, beaten by Natasha. Wow. Uh, so, uh, what a rivalry but, yeah. you two had. Yeah, Didn't yeah. Lot, again, crucial conundrum, didn't get it. Um, comedy car. Comedy car, yeah. Don't even, I've got a mate in Wolverhampton, uh, Vince, shout out Vince, yeah. who, who still... When he wants to get like get my back up or whatever, right? We'll just say comedy car, <laughs> <laughs> like, and then it's and it's now we're like we're two months off, sort of twenty years since I first went on, and he still uh, still knows how to push my buttons. Yeah. But um, and yeah, what is and it? Then I, what is comedy car? Democracy. Democracy. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Okay, that's a cool one. And then you came back again. And what I found funny was when you returned in 2004, um, yeah. that, you know, was this at the time of nuts? It just started, yeah. The fact that one of your disallowed words was blokeyist. Yeah. You yeah, can't I write that shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I personally believe that uh, you would now... That would now be allowable, but um, I don't know. The concept of being blokey was was kind of in its infancy at the time. So, yeah. And were but, you- uh, I, I, I honestly, I, I did, I did the, I did the, the countdown equivalent of choking that day because it was absolutely shocking, mm. and uh, and kind of not taking it very seriously as well because I was, for some reason, for some reason I was really nervous. Um, right. Because there was like a fifty pound book token on the line, and it was would have have basically been the first time I'd ever made any kind of uh, financial gain of any kind out of appearing on the show. Um, So yeah, I was kind of nervous and Mm -hmm. uh, talked a lot. uh, It's fair to say. And um, one of the producers of um, Countdown, former champion called Damien Eady has described that show as his least favourite countdown <laughs> show of all time because of my <laughs> because of my behaviour. Oh my god. So is it like Hall of Fame shows people will be like, oh this guy did really well or this was a really lame one with a guest or um there's they have like periodical kind of champion of champion of champions. But wow. I think that um as a result of that game in two thousand and four I, th- I suspect they're not inviting me back anytime soon. <laughs> Uh, so um, not even like yeah. as a battle rapper in Dictionary Corner, like uh, yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, when the, when Carol left, oh. um, uh, my good friend Carol, um, Kaz, by which I mean my vague showbiz acquaintance, Carol. They couldn't uh, afford her man. Afford her no, man. no. 
But I was thinking of applying for the Rachel Riley job. Yeah, no, uh, a guy would be a brave <laughs> choice next. Yeah. That would be but, good. Uh, you know, I was thinking they might want to kind of swerve it and take it down a whole new... But, uh, Certainly yeah. a swerve. Um, uh, you know, just in the same way that we're going to get onto, you were there, maybe not at the beginning, but definitely when Battle Rap started to get popular in a lot yeah. of people's eyes. You were equally there earlier, I don't know in what capacity, five, ten years or so, uh, where bloke culture was, was booming. It, it, it was yeah. a, a massive staple of the mid-2000s. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was, um, it was enormous uh, to the point that um, I, I was kind of one of the, the, you, the, we, we were Founding kind of fathers. like the, the butt of the joke. I mean, yeah, I was one of the original team. Wow. And because we were sort of like the butt of the jokes in a lot of the, of the pieces where we'd be kind of like dressed up in ridiculous outfits going out in public and stuff. Um, you know, we were getting recognised. I mean, the, m- m- colleagues more so than me would mm. get like recognised in the street, recognised by taxi drivers and stuff like that. And it was crazy. It was crazy to be part of something that ballooning to the extent that it did. And also crazy to be part of watching that balloon sort of slowly deflate over yeah. over the course of uh, half a decade. But um, what? yeah, without without nuts, this is kind of like um, we're talking about nuts magazine, obviously, yeah. who um, who I worked for for ten years. But nuts kind of segues very neatly into um, into my battle rap experience because if it wasn't for nuts, then uh, then the battle rap. Uh, would never have happened. That that was for the Plan B uh, quote, was yes, it? yes, yes. Um, I was ostensibly for most of the time that I was at Nuts. I was um, my role was editor at large, which is kind of like a quite grand title for a, a sort of minister without portfolio thing. You always um, correct people who call you editor in battles. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I sort of don't want to, it is a completely different yeah. thing. There's nowhere near as much as a responsibility. But um, whenever the editor or the deputy editor were, was away, um, I would step up into the deputy editorial role, which meant that I was passing pages. Now, this would only happen like kind of four or five weeks out of every year. But on this one occasion, I was, um, I was passing a Plan B interview. Mm-hmm. And whoever interviewed him, had asked him, what, what are you listening to at the moment? Now, what's interesting about that is we would never normally ask a question like that. Right. That's an NME question. Yeah, yeah. It's not, not the kind of question that we'd, um, what that we'd ask him at, at yeah. all, um, you know, because we want to ask him stupid questions about, you know, trainers and groupies and stuff. Sure. Um, but uh, whoever asked it, asked it. And um, the, he said, you know, um, I've been... Uh, watching a lot of um, the battle battle rap on Don't Flop at the moment. So um, there's a Scouse, a Scouse rapper called O'Shea who's hilarious. Now, I started out as a, as a rap journalist first and foremost. I mean, that was, that was my speciality when, in, when I sort of first moved to London. Um, but by the time I got into my 30s, I'd kind of fallen a bit out of love with the stuff that was around at the time. Mm. I was sort of, I had a, this huge record collection and kind of felt like I didn't particularly need to be buying anything at the, at the time that, that I wasn't really feeling. Um, uh, but I just thought, okay, yeah, that's interesting. And the uh, Scouse battle rapper, I'd be interested to see that. And so my first taste of it um, was, I mean, I'd watch sort of stig battles and things like that, but, but kind of in a slightly detached, yeah, I can kind of, I kind of appreciate it, but you could, Although he's obviously a great, great, great freestyler, there's a, the, it, because of the very nature of freestyle, there was quite quite a bit of filler. I felt sure. or, or stuff that wasn't necessarily hitting. And then I watched, um, so I watched O'Shea against Dirtbag Dan, and um, and it was kind of like it was kind of like one of those light bulbs above the head uh, moments. You know, it's just like this is absolutely amazing, and this guy's amazing. And so I, I started kind of wolfing down O'Shea battles. Um, I think I watched stuff like Frank Stacks and The First Censor. Um, and then through Osh, um, I saw Osh and Ricky against um, uh, Kong and Giz mm-hmm. and thought, that's great. And this guy, Ricky Wiley, is really funny as well. Mm. So then through, through that, I got into watching Ricky Wiley stuff, him against... People are like, oh God, conquest, dear God. Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, when uh, obviously 
um, he he kind of pulls out the limerick scheme, which I thought was uh, which I thought was fantastic, and I just started getting into uh, getting into him, and then through through him sort of got into innuendo, yeah. um, and uh, yeah, just stuff like innuendo against unanimous. I think it was was one Big of the yeah, yeah one of the early ones that mm. I watched. Unanimous was great in that. Yeah, and then um, and then pamphlet. Oh. And, and and various because it, it I, I, sorry I, I watched definition stuff I watched um, definition against PH mm-hmm. and um, and then sort of started discovering things like soul calm against QP yeah. and um, uh, Carter Deems and who was it uh, it's Carter, Carter Deems and Fresco wow back I, then if I, I imagine that against um, Soul Khan and Dirt back then I'm gonna look that up Is that right? Right? yeah I mean that's, that's yeah, yeah. that sounds plausible. You know, yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, so I, I just was like, okay, this stuff is this stuff is fantastic, mm. and and obviously for somebody who works with words, I was just like, you, it, it, it was like I say, it was like this, it was like a, you know, it's a, a return to real lyricism, and ly- lyricism kind of deployed in a in a kind of combative way, which just really appealed to me, and around about that time. Just when I was like starting to get um, sort of vaguely obsessed with it, mm. um, I was working for the writing for the Guardian Guide as well, and they got in touch and said, "We've got a spare page coming next weekend. Is there anything that you want to write about?" And I said, "Well, yeah, actually, I want to do a, I want to do a profile of this um, of this Scouse battle rapper, who, oh. as far, who, as far as I can see, seems to be one of the best in the UK." Um, and um, they said, "Yeah, go for it." And so I did. Um, uh, O'Shea's got the got the, the headline or something like O'Shea's got the rhymes that bite, which is sort of because I made reference in the piece to his teeth, right. <laughs> and uh, and um, you can still find that online actually. I yeah, it's I've yeah. I, I, I just found it, Pete. It's uploaded the twenty fourth, so yeah, it's in the guide. Saturday the twenty fourth, I should say, of July twenty ten, which yes. is crazy. Like, because it's just weird for me to think personally that yeah. I wasn't I wasn't in battle rap for probably another eighteen months or so. So it's like yeah. you know uh, this was still going on. But yeah, um, written by Pete Cashmore, and you just you basically do all his best lines from Dirtbag yeah. Dan to ZT to yeah. East Anglican MC Censor, <laughs> and you just quote him pretty much as like a nice paragraph saying Plan B has been effusive about him in interviews and his appearance of the yeah. Dirt um, Mark about as being a cut above the rest. It's so cool that you were putting your passion into that and putting it in somewhere like the Guardian, which now is huge, but even back then was just you know. I mean, it is yeah. like the guy. The guy has got a huge span. There's some, there's some fantastically, there's some fantastically Guardian comments in the comment section. Right, okay. Uh, it's sort of like <laughs> you know, homophobia and, and yeah. misogyny and stuff, which I think we can touch upon later because it's sure. something that I've, I've kind of got stuff to say about. But. um I, I found him on Facebook hmm. and I dropped him a line and said, um, my name's Pete, I uh, work for The Guardian, um, doing, uh, uh, basically I've done a profile of you that's going in the, the Guardian Guide at the weekend, um, just thinking, you know, I'll let him know. Yep. And um, and thus began a friendship that has, uh, that has endured for, um, you know, for the last sort of six, seven years. Uh that ended up with me going to his key to christening, you know, uh, because obviously he was thrilled to bits. I mean, he was still he was still working at Morrison's at the time, yep. and so for um, for him to be to be in the Guardian was obviously like quite a big deal for him. But I um, I also um, got in touch with her not long after that, and sort of introduced myself and said, you know, I think what you guys are doing is uh, is pretty amazing. I've got these. I've got a couple of platforms that I think I can help you with. Obviously, you know, you saw Ocean the Guardian, but I said, um, "Could you, do you think, put together like a kind of vaguely unoffensive but funny punchline reel, and we'll stick it on the Nuts website?" Mm. And um, Kruger, I think, um, edited one together that uh, oh. that went up. That was kind of like, I guess, sort of when you think about it, it's kind of like a prototype kind of punchline of the month sort of affair. Mm. And, um, and, uh, yeah. And from there on, it was, um, I, I just kind of watched from afar for a bit thinking that, you know, it's, it's, it's great to watch this stuff, but it, on a, on a realistic level, you're, you're kind of, um, you know, you're 37 now. You're not going to go to one of these events. And then of course, April falls the next year, uh, 
by that time, I'd gone to Liverpool to, to interview uh, Dick Limerick. Right. And uh, and spent the day with um, with Rick and Osh. And I'm wondering if anybody else came out, because I, I, I don't know if... Well, they were trying to get the calcium kid out, but he didn't come. Right, right. Um, uh, and had a very fun day in Liverpool, kicked over at Rick's place. And, um, and again, you know, just kind of like had a great laugh. <laughs> Cemented, cemented the, the friendship a little bit, yep. and then um, April Fools came around in, in 2011, and it was uh, Ocean Battling. Um, Jesus, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, and he he was like, um, you know, you should come, mm. and I uh, and I did, and that was that was my first event, and. Um, and I was assuming that I was going to stick out like a sore thumb and be like, so 20 years older than everybody there. Right. But there were people like, I mean, Cosmo was DJing, uh, English was there, Mark Grist was right. there. Battle Most Prob, didn't he? Battle Most Prob. And obviously I met Most Prob, yep. who, uh, who went on to become, uh, you know, one of my one of my best friends in the world. Um, and uh, a lot of them, there were a lot of people there who who was sort of slightly older, who knew that I'd written for Hip Hop Connection. Mm -hmm. And so there wasn't kind of like that, I must I must prove to you that I am down thing. Um, because people people were like, yeah, you know, you, you wrote for Hip Hop Connection during the Golden Age and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff. And, um, and I just thought, well, this is fantastic. You know, I was sort of like, I was quite bored in my, in my actual outside of work life. Right. And I thought, this is actually something that I can really get on board with, mm -hmm. and this is something that that I can see myself like repeatedly coming back again and again, and uh, so it proved. And that was your first appearance on camera, in a sense, you're in the crowd. But the yeah. first actual judging, you know, this is Pete Cashmore sort of thing. Is that the one with the pint of wine? No, no. The first judging oh, right. that I did, first judging that I did was um, uh, Jefferson Price against Therapy. Right, okay. Which was filmed... Which is not happening right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they, uh, we got kicked out of the Fiddler's Elbow. Um, shout out to Fiddler's Elbow. Classic. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Classic venue. What a great venue it is. It's just P perfect. P it's the classic venue in my yeah. life. It's the venue yeah. of Battle Rats. Um. So, yeah, Judge uh, Jefferson Price Therapy... Um, the the pint of wine thing was um, yeah. was my third one. Right. Um, I went to. I want to say it was. I want to say it was to the test, but I'm not sure it was. Wasn't it a Brighton um, event? No, the the second one I okay. went to was um, was at the uh, Brixton Jam, mm. and that was my first um, my first experience of what would become legendary uh, sleepovers for various battlers. It sort of. Oh, I, I, I ended up kind of becoming the uh, the sort of go to go to house to keep over at and uh, sure. I think that night I had Impact uh, and I had Pamphlet and I had Osh uh, and Osh's Mrs. Uh, all staying over at my right. gaffle so there might there might have been others as well but um, it was uh, yeah it was a two day one and I went to one of the days and it was uh, Wizard Against Scissors hmm. which is my absolute favourite battle ever um, and, uh, and that really that that day really kind of cemented cemented stuff, and I was just like, I love this, and I can walk home from here as well. Um, but yeah, the the pint of wine thing was Brighton, which was my yeah my third third event, first yeah. time out of uh, first time one outside of London, and um, the way that I mean that's another I'm, I'm trying to remember the, the Lord Palmerston, I think it's called, right. and it's another great venue in the summer because you've got this this back garden area with a kind of it's on two levels so you can kind of have like you can kind of stagger the crowd down these steps mm. and have them kind of like looking over the, the pit if you have the pit at the bottom and um it was it was it was a beautiful day really warm um but there was it was very very quite tightly packed and the, the, the distance from the from the viewing area back into the bar was quite far and so um, I, uh, I got kind of annoyed and bored of sort of going back, back and forth to the bar. So I asked them to do me two glasses of wine and just dump them in a pint glass. With a bit of ice. 
give it that that sort of summary chill. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then uh, I happen to be judging um, most prop against Bowski with the pint of wine. Oh, great and most prop the, performance in that. Battle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was the, that was the day that he took. Uh, Obviously, we all know about this. He's going disastrously against Christie. Yeah, yeah. Um, and cool. then um, I, 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 he was on a hide into nothing against against Zayn Azra. Tough. And then I'm, I'm trying to think who else he battled in his first three. Mm-hmm. But he was he was yeah. he was short on three anyway. And I think starting to get a little bit demoralised. Um, and then yeah, he sort of steamrolled Bowski with that with an amazing mm-hmm. performance and. Um, First day, first time I ever met Bowski as well, who's another one who sort of went on to become, you know, a great, great, very close friend. And mm. um, yeah, so the pint of wine thing, um, I, I sort of did my judging and said, you yeah, know, yes, this is a pint of wine. And um, and for the foreseeable future, was uh, was uh, you're the pint of a wine guy, right? Well, I mean that that did goes to show you kind of how tight knit the community is, isn't it? That just a guy judging has a moniker, yeah. like it's kind of yeah. uh, you know uh, betrays that. And you know you were there, so you're watching battles then. So you're kind of there in the whole Blizzard Lunar Maelstrom. You're like an onlooker yeah. then. Are you yeah. bl- are you blogging then? When does your involvement with the blog come about for? Don't um, yeah, I mean I, I sort of. They obviously, as time went on, don't flop. It was readily apparent was was turning into an industry that wanted to kind of, um, as they say, diversify their portfolio mm. um, as much as they could. And um, you know, one of those things is obviously um, a website. So one one way to get content for um, for a website is to blog. And um, I got chatting to uh, chatting to Bent Legs just on. Um, on social media, I hadn't, I hadn't met him at this point. I didn't meet him until until Norwich in uh, in early two thousand and twelve. Mm-hmm. I think I'm right in saying, or late two thousand and eleven. But um, yeah, you know, I just um, I said I'm completely happy to do uh, to do this stuff for nothing, just to kind of um, you know further the further the brand and fight the calls and stuff. Mm. And, um, and obviously, Bent Legs ended up um, pretty. Um, he might even have been running it at the time, but obviously, ended up running the blog. And that's and that is how uh, that is how my my debut came about. I'm getting you and your bullshit witticism. When I bring the flame storm, it ain't internet criticism. I'll make you wish you'd never taken this battle, boy. I swing irons at my side, Rory McElroy. <laughs> Second to the Thule, a blast firstly. I'll leave you. I'll leave you. I'll leave you like most props saying. This is going disastrous. <laughs> And just out of interest, because I see Don't Flop was getting a lot of attention at this point in time, what were the rough viewing figures on the blog? What, was it being read widely? I, I don't know, do you know? No. I, I didn't ask. I mean, I know... Um... I know when I did the one about um, when I did the one about sort of like battle rap as a means to sort of fighting depression and stuff, mm. uh, that seemed to get a fair old amount of right. fair old amount of traffic. Right, right, interesting. And so, we, yeah, we start then uh, with your battle career. Of course, you know we have a lot of battles to get through here. You did, yeah. you know, you dabbled, you did, did well. You know, you beat people. It was uh, yeah. been very entertaining to watch these back. And we get into the the bent legs battle. You are battling yeah. your blog boss. Um, yeah. Begin with the interviews, which is quite fun. Um, when we yeah, watch it. yeah, that um, was that was one that they were trying out that didn't. Yeah. Really, didn't really catch on, but uh, I think it's necessary though for for a battle like this to kind of just. Because you know it's pamphlet versus impact. Everyone's like, yeah, well, we know this. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's two brand new guys who do have a history in the league, um, yeah. and the character comes through. I mean, this uh, just broke seventy thousand views, Pete. Oh, has it? It's yeah. finally it's finally gone through seventy thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. you know that is um that is a hell of a lot, hell of a lot. Considering, yeah, you know. Um, uh, um, it's funny. It's funny. It, it kind of trips me out to sort of look look back at things like I mean, you know, stuff like. Joker star against Adam the rappers, you know. I don't know. It's, it, it, I think that was one of them that where it's about twenty thousand, and you're thinking, you know, my battle has got <laughs> yeah. three, three and a half times yeah. uh, as many views as Joker star Adam the rapper. Um, 
but yeah okay that's, yeah yeah that's i mean yeah it's nothing nothing to be sniffed at, at all even in the, in, the, in the modern era so um and the crowds i mean part of it perhaps is the following the crowds back then were huge i mean don't flop events were like events like it yeah. had a mad vibe yeah um and i mean that one i i kind of assumed that we'd be on right at the very start mm. And we were on something like fifth in the end, right? And 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 it was, I mean, by the time by the time I, I remember my my binding memory of just before the battle was when they announced that we were up next. I went off to the toilet, had a was, right? Walked out, and then immediately had to go in back and do it again. Mm. So I was sort of quite literally wetting myself, right? Well, and, um, but um. I a pamphlet just sort of took me to one side and said, "Do you want to go through your bars?" And um, and I sort of was like, "Yeah, okay." And I, and I kind of ran through my bars with him. And when you do this with pamphlet, uh, whenever, whenever if you go through your bars with pamphlet, whenever you do like a, a haymaker or what he considers to be a haymaker or whatever, he lets out this little little. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And I did my first round, and um, and, it, and there were a few woos in there. I mean, he sort of like mm. wooed. Obviously, one of the I think one of the the lines that people uh, seem to pick up on was um, bringing slaughter to whales like a Japanese harpooner. And he um, he flipped out at that one, and um, and I was like, okay, so maybe this isn't going to be as completely terrible as I thought. Mm. Um, got up there. And I'm not kidding. When when it was like ninety minutes, ninety seconds on Pete, let's go. My mouth just completely dried up, like <laughs> almost immediately. Yeah. And uh, but then after on my second line, I got a big laugh. And once that first big laugh was out, I was like a little bit calmer and uh, and kind of got through it. But I was terrified. I mean, um, as. A, as a, fond of saying this I've said it probably one too many times but um, I, I mean when I was working for Nuts I went to Iraq during the Iraq war right. I was more nervous about doing Don't Flop than I was going into a war zone Jesus Christ <laughs> <That> is, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, wow um, yeah but I get I get what you're saying when when you take that first word it, it's reality it's being recorded it's you know yeah. there's sort of a hyper awareness of the situation yeah. just before we do get into the bars themselves um, you wrote a little blog on the Don't Flop blog as we mentioned this is called Pete Cash what well, asked for some advice um, and you do some very funny I don't know if you remember this you sort of you interview faux interview battlers at the time and asked yeah, for their yeah, advice yeah. and um some of these i know some of these i don't let's just go through these anyone that crops up that i'm not aware of if you can give a little bit of history that'll be appreciated because this yeah. is like i don't know if you saw recently in the news i think they were digging at some was it like the millennium stadium or something in london and they unearthed yeah. a blue peter yeah time yeah capsule, the yeah. time capsule <laughs> so but i think it was from like the late 90s so this is kind of similar this isn't that long ago but still it's interesting to see so um sprungy apparently said to you just relax know that people aren't judging you apart from the judges and everyone just wants to laugh so yeah. that's, that's that's pretty balanced yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. evil eyes just says chill yes was that his thing was he just just chill yeah yeah <laughs> toucan um he, he taps into a vein that you describe in the battle itself he says don't be callum boom yeah yeah because so. uh, of course by this point um yeah by this point callum boom had uh Worn the affections of rap, battle fans everywhere by calling uh, by calling Impact a black waste right. um, in the uh, in in their their uh, trial yeah, their trial yeah 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 which was uh, one of the uh, the most one sided affairs I think I've ever seen <laughs> um, and uh, yeah so um, he was sort of like still getting it in the neck then so I mm. yeah, yeah kind of. What's the uh, <laughs> what, what? What can I rhyme with Callum Boom? And why would I mention Callum Boom? Uh, I, everyone in this room hates you, kind of thing. So, uh, yeah. LJ says, "Don't let her lose the footage." Who's LJ? Okay. Um, well, I'm presuming it's not LJ the the female MC from Nottingham. Shout out, LJ. No, um, no, no. It's it, just the two letters rather than. I don't. I don't know no. who that would be. Okay. Okay. Do you know what? Okay. It's, um, I didn't know I, who that was either. He's a, he's, a, he, he's on. Um, I think it's a guy called John Joe Lyons. Right. Who's on? Who's on my Facebook? Uh, and I think it was him. 
But um, whether he battled or not, I don't know. But um, clearly, must have must have done. Wow. Yeah, but I, I honestly, honestly don't know who that is. Curious. Shout, out, shout out to the other LJ. <laughs> <laughs> um, emerge MC as well. Um, don't, yeah. don't imagine your opponents in their pants. That makes you gay. Um, who, who was Emerge MC? I've recognised emerge, the name. Emerge, but... MC, emerge MC still doing the rounds. He battled on right. Gift of the Gab. Battled on Gift of the Gab the oh, other okay. day. In fact, and I think he was battling. I might be wrong, but I think he was battling Templar Surfer on the, on Gift of the Gab like a couple of weeks ago. He's um, he's from Croydon. He's uh, he's a ginger fella, and he's battled a lot. He's one of these people who's battled a lot, but only I think ever battled once. He battled against Kets. Right. Remember Kets, who's also ginger and also from Croydon. I don't actually. Um, okay. Uh, they battled in the they battled each other for don't flop in the graffiti tunnels. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. Um, and I remember that day because I took a, I took a girl there on a date. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, uh, yeah, you'll enjoy this. Um, it was the day that Pam- Pamphlet and Bleak did their football battle. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, Boski battled Junior Lapel. Right. And um, and the opening battle was Kets against Emerge. And I think oh hang on, there was another one as well. It was LNC. Against Cracker, right? Okay. Yeah, LNC against Cracker. Um, but anyway, um, Cats and Emerge had both apparently been at Boyola Cats, been up for about four days because they're mates, and um, and I think that was basically the last time either of them ever appeared on Don't Flop because uh, they were so bad. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe the footage was ever released, which is even in, in you know. <laughs> Even for something yeah. as big as Don't Flop, it has to be very, very bad for the footage not to go out. That's true. Um, That's thankfully, a, yeah. this this battle was very good, and, and the footage yeah. did come out. We are back to yourself versus um, yeah. Bent Legs, uh, Don't Flop, April Fools, Concrete, uh, saying new month, new era, new venue. Um, he reveals that both of you were raising money for the Depression Alliance. Um, yep. dot org. Um, a quick check of your page reveals that um, six hundred and thirty pounds on your page. Really? Really? really big. Okay. Yeah, and yep. uh, bent legs raised one hundred and forty three pounds. Um, you know, your interview, your introduce, sorry, is the reason Don't Flop got into the Guardian three times by now. Yep. Um, s- someone's holding like the Don't Flop blog. Um, you know, that's bent legs. North Wales hailing. Um, how long did you have to prep for this battle? I prepped ridiculously long. I mean, I, I reckon, I reckon the, I reckon the Norwich thing happened in January which is where we decided that we were going to do it. Cause I was there to cover, um, I was basically there to, to, I was doing a, a Mark Griss profile. Cause by this time, the, the, like you said, the blizzard battle had been blowing up and I, mm. I was sort of there to the great, actually slight, um, slight sort of side. Step yeah. Here. But, um, yeah, I mean the, the Norwich event, you had, um, the debut of natural for one thing, mm-hmm. most probably against two can, yeah, yeah. Um, you had uh, Boski against Pamphlet, Grist and Blizzard, and uh, Grist, Grist and Blizzard. Uh, sorry, no, Grist no, and Mixie, Mixie against, yeah. against <laughs> Pedro Pamphlet, and Pamphlet. Pedro. Yeah, 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 that was um, uh, Pedro. <laughs> you're, you're as short as any Pedro. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then Pedro <laughs> insults the wheelchair guy. Oh, it's awful. Yeah, yeah, um, and um, Verb T and Joker Star against um, Tony. Sense, no, sensor no, and, and sketch. Yeah, it's, that, that one where basically it was um, it was Verb T and Joker Star against sensor. <laughs> <laughs> sketch was a bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was like a kind of uh, a t- two two one one and a half, I think. Or something yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. But yeah, you know, a crazy day, and that's um, that's when we agreed to do it. Uh, so I mean, I think we had the best part of four months to prepare for it. And I, I crammed, I crammed it to an insane extent, mm. to the point that, I mean, I spoke to, I was speaking to various people about, it, speaking to like, I spoke to Mickey Worth, I spoke to Innuendo, I spoke to Boski, um, just for sort of tips. But the yeah. the, um, the 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 best bit of advice, appropriately enough, uh, came from Er, who said, basically, when it gets to the point that you you you're in the shower in the morning and your bars are going through your head and you think they're all shit. He said, that's when you've basically got it locked and that's when you need to, to just kind of like take a step back and accept that, accept that uh, you've locked it down. And that was probably the best bit of advice 
anybody ever gave me because he was right. By the time I got there, I just hated it. Mm. Thought I was going to, you know, be met with sort of like stony silence and it was just going to be terrible. Um, yeah. but I, uh, I mean, it, I sort of like... Yeah, maybe like four months prep. Yeah, I mean, that ramp is interesting, isn't it? Because it's kind of, I, I, was, I recently learned about sort of MMA fighters and the way they do it is they're sort of training to the peak and the peak is the day of the battle. So it's, mm. you know, so it's like learning your bars maybe a week before. So you have them locked in the night before. I don't know, rather than because you can just have that nausea, can't you, to your own yeah. stuff. Where it's just yeah. like, this isn't clever, you know, damage mentally, fat dick, dentally, yeah. you know, just like <laughs> owl licks, Bentley. Um, I mean, lots of stuff anchored to his name at the start of your first. And, you know, yeah. the word flips, they're, they're great crutch. And I don't mean crutch in a negative way, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just sort of, um, the Alex Bentley, I just thought, hang on a minute, that sounds like gayness. And, oh God, um, you know, kind of went down that route, um, which was something that over the course of time, I was just like, how about we try to avoid the kind of, homophobia and misogyny that that uh, the scene gets accused of all the time um but, but yeah I, 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 kind of, I kind of went route one in that battle and, and me personally i've all, I pretty much said this to anyone who, who's ever spoken to me about it i, I personally think ben legs took it um in terms of uh obviously i think it's fair to say that i took the second round but i think the first and third is were his were just kind of like certainly more direct. I mean, my third as um, oh god, what's the guy's the Patrick Blaine? Chat Patrick Blaine. Um, he he sort of pointed out that my third my third round was extremely un, in, undirect, and uh, and I, I kind of agree with him, right? Um, on that score, but uh, I'll you know I'll, t- I'll take the I'll t- take the W what, in whatever form it comes into. <laughs> And, you know, we have all the, uh, you know, the, the sort of primal, nascent Maltese. We have the sort of, you know, yeah. you're gay. We have the, your mom's um, yeah. pus is ridden with sores, you know. Um, <laughs> it's so slack that when she drops her drawers in a strong wind, it sounds like a round of applause. Applause, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, takes more rapper shots than Liam Bagnall. So, you know, <laughs> I think bringing slaughter to Wales like a Japanese harpooner is quite nice. The pamphlet Woo uh, does, does yeah. make sense there. Then we have the, the antic the prop to a certain extent Pete at the end you get oh, the yeah, magazines yeah. out the guy's my enemy you say this with the publications in your hand you better be yeah. guarding your nuts yeah if you chat if you chat and chat magazine comes out if chat okay. it's after the battle you best be guarding your nuts right, right. so yeah yeah props <laughs> <laughs> um I mean no joke it's a pretty huge round the crowd dig you a lot you know it's not awkward it's yeah, triumphant I think, I think the, the, the thing was I mean I think people weren't expecting anything from us at all yeah and um, and what they got was um, well, you know, I look back at it from time to time, and uh, you know, it's just, it's a funny battle. I mean, I crease at some of the stuff he said about me. <laughs> you know, that I got cats. You're old. You collect cats. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was an amazing one, and um, you know, it's uh, and it stands up, and people kind of um, it serves a purpose. I mean, it's not the greatest battle that, that ever there was, yeah. but um, it does serve a purpose in that. It shows that people can can like sort of step outside from maybe their comfort zone, give it a go, and actually do something half decent. Yeah. And um, you know, a few, a few people I think sort of have said to us over time, it kind of like gave me gave me the confidence to do it because I don't think of myself necessarily as a battler, but. You know, you guys, you guys did a great job. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. It's very indicative of, of the culture that don't flop in body. You know, now and then, really, you can never see in URL they get like all oh, the blogger and the guy who edits it are battling now. It's like, but in don't flop, it makes sense and people sort of want to see it. And I think it is a lovely little look back. Um, just a few choice bars from Bent Legs. You look like Stephen Merchant after a, <laughs> after a trip to Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, he says, "Stop trying to be Charlie Brooker." You say that's low. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. um, I'd um, I'd stood in, I'd stood in for, believe it or not, I stood in for Charlie Brooker a few times at the Guardian when he did um, he did his screen burn thing in um, mm. in the guide, and they 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 called upon me a few times when he was when he was off doing um, much more successful things and um, and had me do it, and all that happens when you stand in for Charlie Brooker is 
despite the fact there's a little thing at the bottom saying Charlie Brooker is away, yeah. all you get in the comments is, um, this is terrible, where's Charlie, when's, when's, uh, when's Charlie coming back? Oh. It's quite infuriating because no matter how good a job you do, you've just got like all the Charlie Brooker acolytes saying, we want Charlie back, bring Charlie back. And, uh, and so sort of the Charlie Brooker thing was, was he's kind of like my soft white underbelly where, where if you hoof me, it really hurts. And, um, yeah. So, so when he pulled that one out, I don't know if I told him about this or whatever, but, um, I was like, Oh, you absolute cunt you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, stop trying to be Charlie Brooker and splash out on the hooker. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Was, uh, that was a nicely done. Nicely done. And, and we have one of those timeless bars in your second, which is gum round based. Yeah. Um, by the time I finish squeezing, you'll miss breathing. Got a terrible arsenal like this <laughs> season. <laughs> yeah. This season. Wow, um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the sort of the, the gum bar thing, I've got no idea how, do you know what I think it is? Like I say, I mean, I've been, I've been listening to, I was listening to, first started listening to hip hop in 86 so I was listening to hip hop for more than 20 years when I came into Don't Flop and had approximately sort of 20 years of slang terms for for guns to right. fight. Um, um, there was uh, there was one that didn't make the cut um, which was um, in, 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 in the late 1980s one of the slang terms for gun was weasel um, and one of the one of the lines, I think, and the something like so. I'm coming with the weaponry, of course. I keep two weasels in my trousers like I'm from up north. Ah. Um, and of course, firstly, you would get the weasel reference, and secondly, they don't have to weasels in their trousers up north. They they have ferrets in their trousers, so it would uh, completely not have worked. So I'm kind of glad I forgot that one. It ain't one floor of the cuckoo's nest when I nurse the ratchet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, swing irons at my side, Rory McElroy. Rory Mac McElroy. Oh, yeah. uh, most prob pops up saying this is going disastrously. Oh god, yeah, yeah. A little camera. Yeah, I mean there. that was that was that was the big laugh of the um, of the battle for me. I think mm. um, because you know what I'd, uh, what I'd been a kind of because of the nature of the of the the grist blizzard thing obviously people have then gone on to kind of like look into other stuff mm. um that, that he'd done and and, and so the, the prob battle had got this massive viewing spike and i think it's probably on about one hundred and twenty thousand. if you if you're gonna do your speedy typey <laughs> thing. yeah i'll get that no problem yeah but i think, I think, right. I think it's about yeah. one hundred twenty thousand. but um so by this time, the sort of this is going disastrously had become a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> 170,000 is 170,000. Yeah. Okay, it, the, 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 this is going disastrously thing had become a kind of thing that he was known for. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, over the course of time, it got exaggerated to the point that anytime anybody does it, and pamphlet that like was doing it all the time. They do this kind of jazz hands thing with it, with the, that didn't actually happen. In the uh, in the original battle, but when he um, when he uh, when he did it, when it came to him doing his cameo, he did the kind of the full jazz hands. This is going disastrously. Um, but in order to set that up, I had to find something to rhyme with disastrous. Came up with the astrously blast firstly, <laughs> 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 which is, was just. Um, I mean, Patrick Blaine, I think almost had a coronary when I did another second to the two Lee at Blast firstly. <laughs> it was such it's just a horrific setup, but uh, yeah, seemed to, uh, the end justified the means, I think. Mm, and you come out with the win, Pete. Um, yeah. Patrick Swain, um, you know, in your favour, um, possessed, MA is also there. Like I don't know if yeah. you remember Possessed, who speaks for like two and a half minutes. About yeah, nothing. yeah. He just yeah. rambles on. Like you just got to keep pushing yourself. It's like what are you yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It was kind of like I um, mean, sort of picked up on the depression thing and, and and ran with it and continued to run with it and um and yeah. MA went on. It was a very very long. Yeah. It was one of the longest judging processes I've ever seen because you've got MA who breaks everything down to in kind of like yeah. in an extremely methodical way. You got Patrick Blaine, who's like this kind of like fan personality long before the David Masters era. 
shout out David Masters, wherever you are. Um, and then, and then, yeah, Possessed kind of uh, launched into this sort of, you know, this is the way to live your life kind of screed. Mm. And um, and I was just sat there going, like, come on, for fuck's sake. I want to know, I want to know who won. Yeah. And, uh, yes, it was, uh, yeah. Was it, was it better than winning Countdown? I'm going to let you to a secret now. I'm going to, this is, um, this is a, uh, Bar up resume exclusive that I never told never told anybody ever, and I didn't didn't tell anyone in the day. But um, after the battle was over, after it was all announced, I went outside, went around the corner from the venue, which was um, uh, I can't remember the name of the venue. It's, it's, it's concrete on the concrete or something. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's under the, under under Pizza East, right? In, um, in uh, near Old Street. I went out, went around the corner, and I burst into tears. Oh man! For, for like about for about ten seconds, I, it, <laughs> it was it was such a it's a great achievement. It was such a it was such an outpouring of um of of kind of you know the, the adrenaline. It was adrenaline. It wasn't like tears of emotion or anything mm-hmm. like. That. It was pure adrenaline. It was just like me kind of expelling that adrenaline, and I just blarted for about ten seconds, and then started telling everybody texting everybody telling them I'd won so incredible and, and and back then as well it was sort of footage was golden wasn't it it was like oh shit this is on tape it must have been very exciting the day it came out yeah yeah I mean the, the sort of um, everyone at work obviously sort of clustered around my computer and and I'd, I obviously tweeted it out to people um, and uh, yeah I think they were quite taken aback <laughs> um, in particular one guy I know on Twitter just uh, messaged me and was like, "That that is amazing." And um, by this time, I turned thirty nine. Mm. So you know, I was uh, I did the battle when I was thirty eight. Was now thirty nine years old, and um, yeah, the, the the response was quite quite spectacular. Because again, you know, there's that expectation that it's going to be terrible and that we're both going to kind of disgrace ourselves. And what you actually got was a lot of it's to do with the filming. I mean, at the time Bagnall was using this kind of vague, this sort of vague fisheye thing on the lens, which meant that if you went and did straight to camera stuff, Mm. you actually got this really kind of quite dramatic uh, Mm. shot of you kind of suddenly looming, looming large and slightly exaggerated in the frame. And it just looked terrific. And like, I love taking grabs from it when, when me and him are like actually doing stuff straight into camera rather than each other. Mm. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and uh, obviously I did the kind of big up to each and every one of our 17 views, yep. but um, mm. that's not how it turned out, of course. And we, we push on from, from bent legs and, um, you know, you're battling a lot. This is 2012. This gets uploaded yeah. in, in, um, May of that year. We have uploads in, you know, July against average Keith and then yeah. going, there's, there's three more that get uploaded that year as well. So it's yeah. not even like, you know, they were done later on and put on 2013. So you clearly, was it a spark ignited within you? Like yeah, you've been writing a long time, but it's kind of a different part of the brain, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it's, um, it's obviously great to kind of stand up in people and have, have a room full of people laugh at you mm. and um I'd, I'd been to a couple of the barmageddon events in wolverhampton because you know obviously that's where i'm from yeah. wanted to um wanted to support the support the scene and they were getting a few good people in you know they got um uh innuendo battling Boski and um pamphlet came along to one of the early ones um i can't remember who we battled that day but um right but um the, the first one kind of ended in um, ended in an absolute in absolute chaos. Uh, with um, the last battle of the day was was supposed to be a guy a guy from Manchester called Hefty, who's um, who's a terrific uh, terrific battler uh, that just never never did don't flop I don't think um, against um, a local guy called MG, and at the last minute MG pulled out but came to the battle anyway. <laughs> Which is just um, a fantastic, uh, a fantastic thing to do. But his brother is a guy called Sarge stepped in mm. and did a freestyle thing with um, with Hefty, and it got to it got to the end, and th- there was like palpable aggression between the two of them. It was like you know fronting up to each other in a way that 
you would do if you're about to fight somebody. Mm. But he got to the end of the battle, and he, instead of like judging it and saying, "Yeah, this guy won," the whole room was was pretty booze, boozy at this point, and everyone sort of started going, you know, overtime, fourth round kind of thing. And that was unfortunately the moment at which um, at which um, an actual fist fight erupted <laughs> between, between between the two MCs. Um, some guy got glassed. Oh shit! Oh yeah, that, got, that gets referenced. Standing, it? standing next to Hefty, and as Hefty's king, been keen to point out to me, Hefty did not himself got get glassed, but somebody did. Uh, in the midst of all this, this massive brawl between Mancuni and uh, Hefty and his people and Wolverhampton people, mm. pamphlets in the middle of it all going. Guys, guys, it's just battles. It's just battles. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we we got out of there. Me and you and I both skin pamphlet just sort of went off and uh, found another pub. But um, I was just like, okay, if they can if they can iron out the if they can iron out the uh, the fighting and um, and maybe if we can kind of help them get a few better, better people up. Um, I'd quite like to. I'd quite like to battle in my hometown. I think that'd be terrific. Mm. And uh, I'd met Keith at the the tryouts in uh, in January 2012. I forget who he was battling. Um, I just, he was. He's a lovely guy, Keith. Mm. And I just thought, you know, I want to stick with battling people that I like and that I know and that I've had some sort of like vague connection with. Um, and so, sort of suggested to the guy who ran Barmageddon, I said, you know, I'm local from Wolves, uh, and sort of said, you know, I battled him, don't flop against mm-hmm. this guy, bent legs, and he'd, he'd seen it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and yeah, so I got on the kind of middle of the card for uh, the second Barmageddon. Welcome back to Wolverhampton Average, Keith. <laughs> was your journey here pleasant and relaxing, Keith? It was. You know, last time you were here, you smashed it, Keith. <laughs> you think that's happening today? You fucking bullshit, Keith! <laughs> <laughs> I love the um, Barmageddon Free. This is, by the way, what um, you know. You're, you're, oh, is it? yeah, you're introduced as editor of, of Nuts, but you say, yeah. as we said, you're yeah. not. You're editor at large. Yeah. Um, a really fun intro of yours. Quite aggressive. The whole like you're smashing it, Keith. You think that's happening today? You're fucking batshit, Keith. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know where. It, I mean, if no, everybody, for people who haven't seen it, the almost the entirety of. Um, the first round follows this kind of average Keith semi multi where I with average and then just put Keith in. Mm. And I don't know where that came from. I mean, you know, for for a second battle, it was kind of like a quite quite abstract thing from to try out. But um, yeah, you know, it seemed to work. I mean, again, it was all kind of like pretty root one stuff about. Um, about like um, his mum being certainly proactive on a mattress, Keith, mm. and, and all that stuff. Um, but um, again, it was it, it, I was I was at ease very quickly in that battle because got some laughs, but also he choked terribly at the start of his uh, yeah. of his second round, and I was just like, well, okay, if you get everything out in the next two rounds, then uh, and this is a, a, another win for you. Mm. And um, obviously did more gun bars. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're quite easy to do and fun, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And um, and then in the third round, just did the, 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 the Wolverhampton references that needed me uh, handing out crib sheets to the crowd. And again, uh, that seemed to go over very well, the kind of the, the fact that half of my round uh, unless you're actually from Wolverhampton to the point like any town there kind of like a little, a little glossary of terms for people to tell you what I was talking about so uh, interesting on that fun mm. day mm. yeah you know definitely and, then, and by that time I'd, you know so that was like victory in front of the home crowd and, and uh, by that time I was like right my this is my hobby now I mean, who else? Who else is up there on the Wolvo Hall of Fame? Yourself, Double L. Um, there's Double L, who um, I would have to concede is, is is a more adept battler than I. Sure. Um, who else? Baron Mind. Yeah. Who who was um, around sort of quite early on uh, in in Don't Flop days? Had a bit of a is it kind of like a late 
career career blossoming because um, he kind of like fell off quite spectacularly, I think, and then he came and battled for for clash money against Average Keith, and um, and did fantastically well. Um, so yeah, the bear in mind. Uh, a guy called Jay Ruin who battled um, locally and battled for um, uh, Rap uh, Team Wire. Mm. Um, there's there's a there's a bunch of guys who don't really battle. There's, sure. a, gr- there's a there's a group in uh, uh, called um, called Broken Dialects who are very very good. Mm. Um, who I keep trying to kind of I desperately was, was sort of like trying to persuade him to kind of get in, get into the get into the battling side of things, but never quite did it. But um, it's all pretty dead there now since Barmageddon uh, Skitty moved away. Barmageddon sort of faltered, and uh, the scene is yeah, not not too great. Um, so, so the, the aforementioned Sergeant MG, I don't know enough about them to say whether they they kind of still battle or not. And we we get to the um, next battle against uh, Ricky Riley. Yeah. Was he highly, highly qualified, you know, really yeah. adept writer, great sort of forgotten, not, you know, not forgotten, forgotten, but you know what I mean? He's not maybe someone, despite facing Shuffle fairly recently, about three yeah. years ago, that still wasn't, a, you know, still a cool battle though. Um, yeah. Wrapped in Wire, I know this very much in my head as two reasons. One, Raptor comes from here originally. Yeah. Um, I think Bizzo battled as well in there, perhaps as well. Yeah. Um, it's also the league where it has just like giant mirrors on the walls for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, <laughs> it's this really, we talk about the talk about the fiddler's elbow as being like the perfect venue yeah. for for battling. Um, Rain, I think it was is the name of the night. Rain nightclub in Warrington mm. is is completely the opposite. <laughs> it's uh, it's completely not uh, uh, a venue for battling at all. But um, there was got like a kind of pretty good turnout. Um, and like yeah, like you say, um, various people kind of pass through. I mean, the, the person. Who in, in, interested and impressed me most at Rats in Wire events is is probably for my money the, the best. He's certainly the best battler I've seen, never to battle in Don't Flog, um, apart from maybe like Kinnell, mm. uh, which is Jeffers, right? Who, who's a terrific battler, and also a really really interesting guy as well. Because um, in addition to like being in some in some great battles. Um, he also he doesn't write anything down. He does it all mm. in his head, mm. and um, and just f- forms it in his head and, and, and keeps it in his head, which I think is um, quite a quite a unique thing. Um, but um, yeah, Ricky Wiley. I kind of after Average Keith, I was just like I say, I'd kind of thought, okay, right, this is your hobby for the foreseeable future, and you're gonna mm. you're gonna do this until it gets boring. And I had a, I had a bucket list of people. Um, which was um, I wanted to battle most prob. Mm-hmm. I wanted to battle Jeffers after I'd seen him, but um, the number one was um, was Ricky Wiley. Yeah, um, because for, for one thing, I'd um, I'd obviously sort of you know bonded with him over a few points in Liverpool, but also <laughs> basically knew that uh, he had some dirt on me as a result right. of. As a result of that day, so I thought it'd be very funny. This scummy alley cat's a scally prat, and his mum's fanny flaps frame a massive vast size of the valley twat. The vastness of his, the vastness of his mum's vag is weird. I once went down on it. By the time I had finished, I'd grown at this beard. <laughs> Um, Ricky Riley, who has an interesting um, intro where he basically says, everyone's be nice to me as I got bad on the way here of a tub of moisturiser. That's right, rub it in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like people who play with the idea of an intro. Like, it's not, it's not yeah. Very much. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's just, um, he's just one of my absolute favourites. I just think, I just think he's absolutely hilarious. I mean, um, one of my, one of the, one of the great lost battles of the, um, mm. Of the uh, of the, the battle time is when I put on an event in London, a, a charity event called Battling Demons, which was filmed by the people from Barmageddon, hmm. and um, Ricky Wiley battled most prop, and about three thousand people have seen it, and it is it's a fantastic battle, hmm. um, and um, he just has a, he just has this way of looking at the world that that is completely unique in battling. Hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was it was a, a great honour to go against him. I mean, the, the official result at the end of it all was they declared it a draw 
which um, which is preposterous because he absolutely bodied me. Um, and I just wanted to kind of like at least give a really a vaguely decent account of myself in that one. But they yeah they declared it a draw, so um, yeah, kind of um, <laughs> claim a, a draw against uh, one of my one of my favourite battlers ever, even though I don't uh, believe it for a second. Richard Wiley is his name. You say in the first, he's about yeah. as gangster as Richard Whiteley. Yeah, yeah, which is you know a nod to my past. Yes, yes, yeah, very yeah. subtle, very subtle. Yeah. Um, probably doesn't eat meat. Uh, the meek, but his meek burbles make priest sermons sound like verbal Tourette's. Yeah, yeah. Probably hangs with teen virgins and only listens to hip hop's clean <laughs> versions. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then a huge scheme about his Star Wars collection. Yeah. And you. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is so, I'm just remembered how juvenile this was. Yeah. This was an amazingly creative slash disgusting uh, yeah. scheme. So you established first of all that Ricky Wiley Riley uh, uh, he does have a big Star Wars collection. Is that right? Of, of he's, 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 he's just a he's just a massive nerd generally. But yeah, that right. is one of his. He's, he's got a lot of that kind of um, memorabilia knocking around. Yeah. So you just sort of talk about him jabbing each figure up his ass and basically yeah, yeah. like you know uh every stormtrooper up in his pooper yeah um, eyebrows count- eyebrow yeah. stuff here uh jab of the hut stab of the butt <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I, can, I can just imagine like soul seeing this and feverish and taking <laughs> notes and uh um and it's quite funny actually because he mentions the collection in a flip at the start of his first yeah, he says yeah, that he's yeah. battling watto which yeah. is <laughs> quite nice um you have a you have a hobby photoshopping tits um and there's something wrong about an idle age man trying to spit because all you remember from 90 because you remember it from 1981 you prick yeah um it's um and then i mean pete we have something that happens in so many battles um i've seen this live many times seen this in the past uh people talk about the vastness of their opponent's mother's vagina <laughs> yeah it's yeah so common <laughs> it's just like yeah really yeah is, um, i mean I kind of um, I, I, that was I did I did it against bent legs as well and um, and sort of it was uh, the, it, you know one of my favourite lines is from Luna was the one about um, uh, fisting her and someone someone shook my hand right uh, and um, yeah so I kind of riffed on that kind of variation a, a bit and um, and I was um, the uh, <sighs> She's she's taken more cocks than he's had dr- wet dreams about warlocks, and it's so deep in capacious it's inhabited by Morlocks. Mm. Was um, was one that I was quite fond of because uh, I think it's like a is it Journey to the Center of the Earth, the Morlocks, which uh, I think so, yeah. So um, the time machine as well. I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. H.G. Wells references yeah. anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, yeah, it, it works, and they, it's a fun kind of back to front from you guys both in this. Um, you talk about chuck a ten, pe- ten pence piece, so deep in a gash, you have to wait twenty seconds to hear the splash. <laughs> yeah, um, see more semen than voyages of Columbus. <laughs> um, so many, <laughs> so much hemorrhoids that when you fist, it feels like a braille reading. <laughs> Yeah, I was pleased with that one. Holy shit. <laughs> um, and uh, and then Ricky in his second talks about a blog that you wrote about pizza. Yeah, oh yeah, I used to do the pizza blog. What and, was um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not there anymore. Oh. Um, I used to do, I used to do uh, kind of a blog about pizza in my spare time. And actually um, involved, like, it, Don't Flop started even sort of seeping onto that. And I did like um, rappers' uh, favourite pizzas, <laughs> battle rappers saying what their favourite pizzas are. And fantastically, um, Pedro's favourite pizza is from a pizzeria in in Harrow called Pedro's, which I thought was fantastic. The fact that um, there's the distinct possibility that he's he's named after his local pizza pizzeria or something, but. Um, but yeah, so I did it. Yes, yeah, so I did do a blog about pizza. Yeah, and you, you did. 
um, you go through his album um, in your second. Yeah. Um, you know, go, all the tracks are shit apart from Stingray, which he had nothing to do with, and Badman, which is basically an O'Shea track. Yeah. Um, you know, you say, fuck Sprung, you fuck O'Shea, fuck Innuendo twice, Calcium Quid. Actually, he's really quite nice. So that's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and Ricky does have that, you know, he is quite a good writer. He can write quite funny stuff. Uh, you have more captive miners than the Chilean cave. I mean, that's, that's an amazing... You get on your that, knees to bow that. Yeah, I mean, that was just, that was just fantastic. Because that, that was a flip as well. Uh, I don't believe that was... Um, I don't believe that was a written because he, um, he he sort of uh, did some rubbish uh, pedophile bars at him and uh, he called calling me a pedo. You, you must be having a laugh, kid, because you've been in more chili. Um, you've been in more captive miners than Chilean K collapses or something like that. Yeah. You've had more captive miners than Chilean K collapses, which was obviously at the time. I think it was pretty recent as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he, so yeah, I mean uh, that was I was just like okay, I'm getting I'm getting bodied here, but at least I'm enjoying it. He does something pretty dark actually, where like he says, "Now I'm going to talk to Peter in the future," and like he goes up the screen and he just shouts, "Do it!" It's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's pretty pretty macabre that, but a fun battle from both of you. Um, very very watchable and, and like Ricky madly underrated that guy. Yeah. Yeah, Evilla said, um, Evilla, the, the guy who, um, who runs Rats in Wire, shout out to David, um, he, uh, he said he was, um, he, he was, there was, there was a, a, a brief period when everybody was doing that, is it ask.fm? Yes. Oh, you yeah, could yeah, like absolutely. ask people. Yeah, and like, anonymous. Yeah. The, 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 there was a minute when, when everybody went like crazy for us, as Dot FM and like battlers were going on there, and and um, somebody somebody asked him what his favourite battles he'd seen live in any league, and um, and me against Ricky was was one of them, which is a great uh, a great compliment from somebody who's presumably um, presumably seen a lot of a lot of battles. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was just great. It was great to be a part of that one. Um, it, it was, uh, you know, the, the, the sort of the, the filming quality wasn't great or anything. But um, the thing that I liked about that was um, when I got into the kind of, you know, fuck scouts MCs, low down louse MCs, <laughs> break into your house MCs, take a shit on your couch MCs. Uh, I was watching it back and I was like, wow, you know, you really, <laughs> you really kind of. <laughs> <laughs> getting aggy going here. in <laughs> yeah you know like really really sort of building up a head of steam mm. and um and uh yeah just I, I was just like <laughs> it was the, there was like a real kind of disconnect you know yeah, I, did, I was like who is this guy <laughs> you know <laughs> sort of roaring insults at uh, yeah. it, it, you know in, in a room half full of Liverpudlians right right three, you know Fox Cares MCs um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that just sort of like again, you know, kind of further cemented how much I was enjoying it. Mm, mm. And you know, clearly because you are battling so much, as we say, and um, we're getting onto the sprungy battle now. So yeah. you know, we're almost six, seven months after the bent has gone. Did you ever think like, oh, don't flop again, or was it always I'm going to carve it out on separate way? What, or? It, what it was, I spoke to um, I spoke to Roan about it. They were doing, they were preparing to do. Birmingham, right? Uh, in Birmingham, and I said, um, I said to him, you know, w- would there be any chance of me getting on the undercard because I'm because I'm obviously local? Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, we our idea for for you against Bent Legs was for it to be a one off. You know, um, we, it's it's cool that you're kind of battling in other leagues, but we're not, you know, we're not a kind of like we don't really <laughs> basically we don't really see you as a battler. And sure. I was like, well, that's that's fair enough. You know, because uh, I I didn't see that, um, and I could I could completely understand his his, his thinking why, um, and obviously eventually I did get invited back and, and, and was unable to do it for unfortunate reasons which I guess we'll get to, um, but yeah so um, so it was very much a case of okay well if I can't battle for don't flop which is fair enough then I'm definitely going to do more for Barmageddon by this time me and Prob had spoken and we were sort of like mad keen on battling each other. Mm. Um, and, uh, and so I just sort of like put my name out to a few leagues, sort of like got in touch with Get Slated and, um, got in touch with, uh, a stand tall in Leeds. 
mm. and just let let them let them know that I was uh, that I was ready to stand at all, ready ready to step up, kind of thing. Yep. And then there was sort of like various. It's funny some of the, some of the battles that were touted but never happened. Like um, at one point, P Soldier was saying he wanted to, to do a gun bars battle with me. Holy like, shit! Like Lovely. really, really, really early in his career. Um, <laughs> and I mean that would have been. Oh really my god! Just, I mean, P P is murdering you right now. And um, Afghan Dan, they just battled yesterday yeah, at the time yeah. of recording this. So, do, yeah. do, do you know? Have you heard anything about it? I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, on Viewpoint, actually, um, Ur shared a video of like the first round. You can't really, the beat's quite heavy, but you can see yeah. that there's a lot of people there. They're reacting well to Afghan Dan. Like, it looks like it was good, actually. Apparently, he showed out quite well. Good. Mm. Good. And I, uh, somebody, somebody posted one of the, might even have been you, actually, posted one of the, um, the lines about di- the dialect uh, bit about, um, <laughs> or he said you're just a little man like Briggsy, right. <laughs> which uh, tickled me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Shout out Briggsy! Yeah, um, of course, <laughs> of course. Shout out Briggsy and shout out the whole 140 yeah. movement. But we get to um, Sprungy. I yeah. mean, definitely a, a cult figure of battle rap, UK battle rap. Yes. Um, I mean, Savant. It, it, it wasn't even meant to be Sprungy. It was meant to be. Um, it was meant to be most prob, mm. and we were meant to be headlining. And um, for personal reasons, with about about three weeks to go, prob prob sort of quit battling for a while. Mm. And um, and so I had a word with them, and uh, they just sort of put it out there and, and said, you know, we've had a headliner pull out um, battling Pete in Wolverhampton. Is it, can anyone? Can anyone step into his place? And you know, I mean, you've been on the various forums to know that long enough to know that whenever these things happen and and you get uh, Mm. um, you get kind of somebody saying, you know, we need somebody to step in. What you generally get is a load of kind of terrible people who've either never battled in their life or have um, battled at the. uh, the aforementioned Lowry Soft League, where me and Quack are headlining. <laughs> uh, you know, you get you get people sort of like throwing their hat in the ring you've, you've never heard of, and then Sprungy threw his hat in. And I'd, I'd I'd met him a few times by this point. He was um, he was at April Fools, obviously kind of very entertaining, uh, drunken scouser. Right. Um, and so I had like three weeks and I was like, well, I've actually, I actually had two weeks off work. I was taking a fortnight off work uh, at, at the climax of which was meant to be the most prop battle. Mm-hmm. So I thought normally I'd take a bit longer than this to prep. But if I do it in, if I do it in three weeks, two of which I'm off work and, and throw in a round of gun bars, then I should be able to, to get through this one at reasonably short notice. Mm. Um, even though three weeks, as we now know, is, is sort of pretty, pretty standard preparation time, I would say. Yeah. Um, so, um, oh, yeah, I took two weeks off, spent, um, uh, spent most of my days, or at least most of my afternoons in the New Hampton pub, best pub in Wolverhampton, shout out New Hampton. Right. Um, right just sort of like spending like about an hour a day memorizing it and and as it turns out for anyone who's seen the footage will know um that it was all <laughs> two weeks of completely wasted effort That's he's a real nice guy Ooh. and i like him like he <laughs> likes pie <laughs> But today I'm laying it down like fat was because for the first time in my life, I get to do fat bars! Yes! Mm. You don't heat the party. You don't even warm the party. You're just a portly farty Paul McCartney who's probably got some poorly arteries. <laughs> and so it's a completely wasted things. Mm-hmm. Um, Sprung had decided that he'd, uh, before he sort of got on the train, that he'd hit the local weather spoons and then come down in the afternoon and continue to the point that when it finally came out turn to battle, he was uh, he'd obviously done no prep at all and was, hoping, and was hoping to freestyle it. Now I've seen I've seen Spongy do do freestyle battles and 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 do great mm. when he's been sober, but um, with me he was he was I mean he was completely hammered. Right. Um, and I think the best bar the best bar that he got out was um, you know Pete writes a pizza blog. Pizza knob, yes, yeah. <laughs> and, and uh, 
and uh, that was about uh, well, that was about what he could manage. Yeah, it was. It, it's not it, I, again. It's good from you still, and it's nice to rewatch it back. Yeah, um, you know, he looks like so for the first time in your life, you get to do fat jokes to an opponent. Yeah. Um, portly Paul McCartney with Paulie arteries. Yeah, <laughs> Portly farty Paul McCartney. Yeah, um, he, he he makes you sound like Mog Deep. Such a <laughs> faggot should be served with peas. I mean, a cash. I mean, sorry, Sprungy P. It's just uh, it's a bit of a train wreck. Isn't it? It's just a complete train wreck. Um, <sighs> yeah, uh, there's no two ways about it. It, it was. Um, it was. I, I've had three train wrecks in my life. Mm. That was. I mean, and I'm not talking about choking, I'm just talking about, like, the kind of, the idea of the battle or, or whatever, just not coming off at all, or just being met with stony silence by the um, by the crowd. Now, the, one of the other ones was um, Santa Claus versus the Queen, which I'm, I'm, I think you're familiar with, because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, Bard spoke about it. And, yeah, uh, pamphlet as well, we sort of mentioned it briefly. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that briefly at, at mm-hmm. some point. Yeah, which is basically going to be me kind of doing my mayor culprit, giving my excuse for why it was so bad. <laughs> and the other one was was me against most prob, which um, is just a b- bizarre thing, really, really bizarre thing. Is it, is um, it released? Yeah, it is out there. Okay. Um, but basically, we did it. We did it to Cantroy to set up a league in Ipswich, mm. which is a fucking weird place anyway. Yeah. Um, and um, and it was. Everything about it was weird. The venue was weird. Mm. Um, it was like in this room above a bar that felt like a kind of like a music room in a school sort of thing. <laughs> the, the crowd had, had got no idea what was going on. Didn't know, oh, didn't know my backstory. Didn't know his <laughs> backstory. Just weren't a battle crowd. Mm. Um, it, even the like the. the the way the, the angle that they filmed it from was was terrible, so so that I, I had some more props that I needed, where I did a kind of like an Adam the Rapper against Adam Feldman thing with their little faces on sticks, hmm. but in order to hold them facing the camera, I was then facing away from the crowd, and it was uh, yeah, it was it was pretty bad. Um, but yeah, I mean the the Sprungy the Sprungy one was an absolute was an absolute train wreck and yet at the end of the day as i said um as as, uh, as i'm fond of saying you know you can only beat what's put in front of you and unfortunately yeah it was effectively a walkover but i came out of there so my record at this point was um was uh, four battles four battles unbeaten and was thinking well you know this is wonderful and then i went up to back to wrapped in wire to battle a guy called brockside mm. who's um, a scottish guy who lives in warrington shout out bill um and, uh, and and choked uh, choked twice, including um, the best part of most of my second round, and uh, and so tasted defeat for the first time um, against. Uh, and I, I kind of reasoned it out by I didn't really know Bill at the time. I mean, I'd, I'd sort of briefly met him at one of the previous Wraps in Wires, but I didn't really know him. And I realised that in order to really to, to kind of successfully write somebody for me personally there needs to be at least some some kind of personal connection of, of sorts there where you've actually right. where you've actually had a bit of time to kind of get to know the person so I found it quite difficult still only lost it 2-1 because I did a I did a Scottish football Scottish football team scheme that uh, that went over really well but uh, like I say choked choked for the first time two two rounds out of three and um, yeah interesting experience tough uh, but I mean the, the high death battle though um, yeah. more of an upswing some pretty yeah. funny material yeah I came, I came back um, I thought you know don't be disheartened by the fact that you've choked to use it you know mm. learn from it and um, and uh, yeah so I'd seen high death battling on Don't Flop um, met him at Wrapped in War a couple of times sort of a, a, the kind of person who you know, he's kind of quite diffident. He's got that. He's, he's sort of very much word play over delivery, which I think it's fair to say um, it was kind of what I I aimed for. And um, the first time I'd met him, I was just like struck by. I'd seen him battling, and, and in, in person, he looked so much younger than he than he did. I think it was him and E Villa against um, Mickey and Jefferson, mm. and he looks a lot younger in person, and and and. And I, I was struck to put, or not too far a point in it, by by 
his, his youthful complexion, shall we say. Mm. And by by this time, I kind of like I kind of got into the idea of like having entire rounds about one thing, just to kind of like put, yeah. do yeah. a bit of a challenge. And so I thought I'm going to do an entire round about his acne. And um, and that first round, I've got to say, I think in terms of reaction from the crowd, is probably is probably the, um, the the best one that I've done because they loved it. His face jokes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they were. Uh, I mean, your face jokes against him. Sorry, yeah, down to the nitty gritty, shitty pity, but you're still pretty zitty. <laughs> yeah. Oh um, my god. And also, I did. Um, I had this line in there that, that made it to the. I did. There was a line. Then, There's so much yellow on your face that you look Chinese. Right. And I thought to myself, is that dodgy? That's <laughs> actually that's actually quite dodgy. And I thought to myself, how am I gonna? I want to leave it in. How do I leave it in? And um, and I, I, I decided what I did was on the day, I said, so much yellow on your face that you look Chinese. And then I just walk up to the camera and just go, racism, right, yeah, right yeah. to the camera, which is a bit of an O'Shea trick, really. That kind of, um, uh, you know, it's sort of, I guess you'd call it, it's, it's like the battle equivalent of um, of breaking the fourth wall, isn't it? It's like that that moment when you sort of like, you're out of the room for a minute and you're kind of like acknowledging the viewer at home. So I did, um, I did the racism thing and, and, and people were rolling, rolling about that one. Um, but interestingly enough, later down the line, I did, um, I did a battle with Jeffers and I got it into my head that these sort of like little reaction or, or ad libs to the camera, uh, kind of like give it, give it a, um, give it a sort of a little breakup of, a breakup of the, of, I don't know, the structure, and it's mm. a little, bit, little bit funny or whatever. But in the battle against Jeffers, there were two cameras, and I was ad libbing to the wrong camera, uh-huh. <laughs> so so I just looked like a dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Which is one of the many reasons why he beat me five nil. So yeah, uh, yeah, that was a that was an interesting one as well. But yeah. I mean, you know, you battled a lot. But the battling comes to an end pretty much with Bombshell in 2013. Yeah. I mean, I know I mean, there was the John Whitmore um, thing, which we'll, I guess we'll yeah. talk about briefly. But, yeah. I mean, was there was there any other – was there reasons you – or just thought, oh, I've done enough now or – It, it kind of – it sort of um, – around about the most problem, it kind of stopped – it stopped being quite so much fun. Right. And, um, and um, it turned, turned into a bit of a chore. And it also – the thing – I just wanted to. Be, I just wanted to be a fan again, basically, and just kind of like I'd done, I'd done a bit. I'd, I'd done a few good battles, and I just mm. thought, you know, you've got a you've got a winning record at the moment. You're like you're sort of five and three at the time before Bombshell, um, and was just like you know, it, it, it's and the, the the Newcastle trip like cost me crazy money to do. I mean, it like it was like well over a hundred pounds in in sort of travel and hotel and stuff. Mm. Um, and so yeah, I just uh, you know there was there were a couple of times when it when it looked like I might I might come out of retirement didn't quite happen. Like there was there was one mooted for a while that um, me and uh, me and Toucan were going to battle uh, O'Shea and Bloodstroke, and then it became me and Bard were going to battle um, O'Shea and Bloodstroke. Mm. Um, and like I say, there was sort of Peace Soldier mooted um, and. Uh, who, who else? Who else was I possibly, possibly going to battle? I mean, I always, I always kind of wanted to do Bobski, but yeah. um, but he's like, nah, you, you, he, he's like, I couldn't be horrible to you, mate. Um, so um, I kind of kept my eye in by in a, another battle rap regime exclusive. Yeah, um, I kind of kept my eye in by um, by ghosting a few lines for a few people, not wow. like not sort of whole heart, whole wholesale. Um, wholesale writing of stuff but um just a, the odd line here and there that um that they i mean wizard used one of my gun bars which was oh, one of the greatest moments of my life but acknowledged um acknowledged it in the battle um it's the one against joker star where it's um you step into whiz bitch please and put the biscuit to your mug rich teas <laughs> um and uh so that was great and then yeah there's a few of the people who i, I won't name because they'll uh 
I get very angry with me, but I just sort of like was suggesting stuff here and there. Still writing. I mean, like I wrote, I did write pretty much um, an entire sort of half a two on two for for O'Shea again, uh, O'Shea and Bloodstroke, but um, but it never never materialised. And as as time went by, I just kind of like got used to going to the events and being the sort of the grand old man and occasionally posing for photographs with fans and stuff. And uh, but not actually. Yeah, you know, the, the itch had gone mm. a little bit. I mean, naturally, it just happens. Yeah, it to, does. To battle as a whole, like, you know. Yeah, you know, everyone gets to a certain point. And I did, like, I did 11 in total in uh, in 18 months, which is, which is, you're talking about kind of uh, almost like Kimmel levels of... Yeah, yeah, no. For, for that, no, for that right. period. You're right, yeah. But is. I think I think Bombshell was a good one to end on because it was a great battle. And again, she sort of, um, I think she... Uh, she sort of got the, the makeup of the crowd really wrong and thought that if she was talking about, you know, the mental health issues of the stalkers or the countdown or whatever, they'd have any idea what she was talking about. Right. Of course they didn't. Whereas I just went, you know, she's a goth, she's got a big nose, um, she makes beats that aren't very good, and um, and then great big Newcastle United players scheme at the end to just sort of like endear myself to the crowd, do a slow it down. Um and uh, yeah, so that was uh, that was it. That was my 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 final actual appearance. And um, I mean, just briefly, don't have to go into it in depth or anything like that. But you know, I went to next in line. I was incredibly looking forward to yeah. seeing you and show up a battle, but unfortunately, I just couldn't come about. Yeah, I mean, sort of. I, I was kind of uh, everybody is is more than aware of the stuff that I've written about about uh, the uh, the struggles that I've had with um, with bipolar disorder um, over over the last god knows how long, and it was kind of um, it was kind of coming to to a bit of a head at that time. Um, I, I just, funnily enough, I just I just won a writing award the previous week. I won an award for like the writing that I was doing on the right basis. And um, the, the thing about bipolar is you get these kind of like these massive spikes of sort of joy and creativity, and they're almost always followed by these these enormous terrible kind of crashes where it, everything shuts down. And so the week that I was the week that I was supposed to be just like locking it down and stuff, I was in no fit state. I was like pretty much bed bound for that week, and uh, it got to the day, and I was just like, I, I just can't do this, man. You know, um, I was getting like you know anxiety attacks, which are which are horrible, horrible things to deal with. Where it's sort of like everything that you do in your life becomes the absolute, the absolute worst that, that can happen is going to happen to you, kind of way of thinking. Um, but. Um, I'm not going to say that it's never going to happen because, um, you know, we talked about it um, at some length. And even though I was kind of saying to him at the time, I was saying, like, realistically, I probably won't battle again. But sit on the bars because you just never know. You know, it, it, it needed it needed just needed something to kind of reignite my love for it a little bit. And I, I sort of I was at uh, King of the Ronalds in London a couple of week, weekends ago and kind of got that. And there was um, there was a couple of dropouts on the day. And norm- normally, John uh, Sherpa would be um, at, at a King of the Ronalds event, and as it turned out on that day, um, he couldn't do it. But I was going to, I was thinking of suggesting had he turned up. You know, people have dropped out. We could do it. We could let's do the show right here, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not going to say it's not going to happen. You see, we've actually heard each other's bars for each other because um, right. we sort of like initially I was in I was in a place where I was saying I ain't going to battle again so uh, let's let's see what we had for each other um, so it'd be a bit weird if we did it we might have to kind of like do some rewriting but I'm, I'm not going to say it's not going to happen because obviously the thing about John is you know when you've got two two people battling with a combined age of 80 right. um, <laughs> Uh, it would it would have been a funny thing, and, he, and I mean his stuff for me was absolute fire, mm, and he was like sure. he was he was creasing against about some of the some of the stuff that I had for him. Um, like there's there's I won't give away too much about this scheme in it, where I basically um, rhymed barbecue with barbecue nine times right. every, every every time every time it was like a different way of bar of barbecue like barbecue. 
a, a line of dolls. Uh, uh, yeah, and um, yeah, and um, a line of people waiting to get their hair cut. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and the, the queue for barber jackets. Yeah, yeah. Um, taser barbs hooking you and all, all of that good yeah, stuff. Yeah, even if like looking up to QP, the bar BQ. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There's, uh, there's so many you could go for. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, there we go, there we go. Uh, but, I mean, other than that then, so now you're more just enveloped in your own writing, is it, as a, as a journalist rather than... Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I sort of... Um, uh, the, the, I, I had this kind of flurry of activity with The Guardian, mainly, where I was um, where I was doing stuff about... I obviously did a couple of things about Christie, and I did a thing about Marlowe and Shuffle, and I obviously did the O'Shea thing... And I did a couple of things where I worked in references to pamphlet and other things like that. Um, and uh, and then obviously did Mickey when he got into the um, the whole thing with James Arthur. I got him into um, got him into the Guardian and the Enemy. Um, but uh, it's 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 funny, you know, what they wanted in spades in kind of two thousand thirteen, two thousand fourteen. Uh, the newspapers suddenly seem to have kind of d- dropped battle rap again, right? Uh, a little bit, and it, that's it's why I'm here. Yes, yeah. In a sense, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But uh, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, t- 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 we we sort of y- y- you're quite right. Um, it, it has kind of um, as as is always the case, you know, the, the, the best coverage of these of these things, and this is you know one of the reasons why Nuts Magazine shut down mm. is because eventually everyone migrates to like the online version so you, you will get you know you will get the much better exclusives and um and, and much better content by going online so um yeah you know it's been a while it's been a minute since i've written about anything um and obviously you know when something like shuffle and marlow comes along there's the sort of like something that you can kind of throw to the guardian and say you know hosh rap is amazing um but, um, yeah, at the moment, I'm just sort of, like, writing about whatever, really. Whatever mm. anyone wants to pay me to write about, I'll, mm. I'll write about it. So so we'll, we'll wrap up, Pete, with a few um, quick-fire questions, as we okay. always do. Um, the first one is, what, do you have a favourite Don't Flop Battle? Yeah, it's Scissors versus Wizard. Uh, yep. And then I'd have to throw in um, Tony against Osh. Um, Tony against Shotty is just unbelievable. Mm. I think Shotty... There's the, 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 there's something amazing that Shotty does in that in that battle. He's 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 he's, he's almost like a, a a sort of a Norwegian. <laughs> this is going to sound so. He's like he's almost like a kind of Scandinavian macabre puppet version of himself. Right. The way that the, the way that he kind of sort of stalks and yeah yeah yeah. Battles the stage. His <laughs> stagecraft is amazing and it and. Faust. Uh, but yes, yeah. yes, that's exactly what I'm, you know. The sort of thing I'm talking yeah, about. I do, I you know, do. when you have the kind of like re- really sort of eerie caricature <laughs> yeah, puppets. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. I can see, I can see. Um, favorite uh, King of the Dot battle. Favorite King of the Dot, uh, I would have to say probably Hollerhand Pat. N- nice, yeah, common choice. Um, choice. Also, another one I'm fond of. Um, Another one from his Hollowhand Cortez. Of course. Well. Oh, holy shit. Yeah, that is a great battle. Um, awesome to see Raekwon in the front of that battle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's crazy, right. Crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy. Yeah. Um, URL? Do you have a favorite URL battle? Uh, favorite URL? Um, it's, I mean, it's got to be Lux Calico. Lux Calico. Um, just because the, the, I, I, that's the kind of battle that I show people who don't know about battling and what it's like, and I show them Lux's... Um, looks his kind of recovered lines in that and uh, so they get an idea about the kind of the intensity that you can mm. have mm. And, mm. Yeah, yeah and what about um, a okay, non don't flog UK battle oh um, well I mean Tony against dialect for KOTR yeah. was uh, was terrific one that I'm a big fan of just because of, of the sort of it, it, I felt a real sense of you know fair play for him for even giving it a go, mm. but um, it's forget Slayton. It's Crisis against O'Shea, which oh, is okay. which is just it's a complete and utter mismatch. I'll tell you another good one. Not forget, for don't forget Slated mm. um, is Definition and Seuss against Jack Sexton and Triple B. Right, Jack Sexton and Triple B. A really interesting one. You got Jack Sexton, who's like a kind of mad. 
massively pumped up fitness freak MMA fighting muscular right. ridiculously good condition guy and you've got this guy Triple B who's who's you know you get like people who are so jawdy that they're almost impenetrable that it almost becomes like another <laughs> another language he's one of those people shout out Triple B um and, uh, and if you watch it, and I, I do recommend that people watch it, you've got Definition and Seuss, two of these, like, don't flop veterans against... Triple B certainly never battled for don't flop. I think Jack Sexton did one mm. at, uh, at one of the Newcastle events. Um, and I think Jack Sexton and, and, and Triple B took it. Mm. I, I don't know whether it was a case of Definition and Seuss and maybe not quite giving it... Um, not quite giving it... Their, their utmost attention. No. But, um, it, yeah, uh, great battle. Mm. Another, another good one, I'd say, um, is uh, two can against spit semis. Right. Slightly hampered by bad sound quality, but um, that's a great, um, that's a great battle. One of my favourite lines, um, two can, um, uh, he says to Spitz um, you're all about the clickety 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 blah excuse me you're all about the clickety clickety bang bang I'm all about the clickety clickety jazz hands and then does uh, <laughs> does jazz hands which was uh, which was funny so, so yeah that's, those are yeah and final two questions uh, yep. not non-battle rap related the first one being uh, your favourite film oh uh, favourite film is Jaws oh yeah classic which because I've got I've got a thing about sharks but it's not about shark, a shark in a, in a, in a sense. It's not. It's not, no. is it? The three about, ages of men on that boat. It's about, exactly, yeah. It's about how men interact with men. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a fantastic, fantastic movie, no yeah. doubt. Um, and finally, your favourite musical artist or band that are in no way hip-hop related? Okay. Um, that's easily done. And again, this is something that you can actually read about on the, on the Guardian website. My, my favourite non-hip-hop band are the Cardiacs. Right. Who are, um, who are kind of like a, 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 I guess you'd call them like, I mean, they, they were called prog punk by a lot of people. Mm. Um, it, uh, they're absolutely unique. Um, and I did a, I did a blog about the, uh, it's a really sad story. They're like, the lead singer, the lead singer is a guy called Tim Smith. They're from like Richmond, I think, or Kingston mm. or something. And uh, an incredibly creative guy. And, um, and then he was, um, he was at a My Bloody Valentine's gig. You know, think about two thousand and eight, and he had he had a massive stroke, and then while he was recovering from this stroke, had another massive stroke and a heart attack. As a result of which, he's currently he's basically just having to learn everything. You know, he's got to learn having to learn to speak, having to learn to move, and and, he, and he's basically effectively living in a, a kind of locked in syndrome sort of thing, um, where he can't like communicate with the outside world. <laughs> And it's just such a, it's a terribly sad story, you know. It yeah. must be awful to kind of like have all this, you know. What I presume is the, the creativity still sort of exists in his head, but um, he just has sort of no no way of, of getting out of it. And I just hope that mm. you know, much like I mean, Edwin Collins uh, recovered from a stroke, and you just hope that uh, Tim Smith and the Cardiacs does the same. But yeah, Cardiacs, good music. It's just crazy. I mean, it's like, but then it, it, it never, it never fails to amaze me. Some of the kind of, some of the weird stuff, the like, like some of the other guys are into, like, um, like Mickey, Mickey Worthless, for example, is a massive Joy Division fan, right? Which, uh, which you know, you yeah. just, you just really don't. Boy expect. Division, more like, like yeah, yeah, <laughs> boy, off. Boyman Division, yeah, Boy um, Division. Uh, and uh, do, 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 I'm going to end on this actually. Yeah. One of my, one of my favourite. One of my favourite rumours that I heard, because obviously, you know, in, in, in by the nature of what we do in this kind of weird, um, weird subculture of ours, what's what's fact and what's and what's not, um, it kind of gets gets muddled up quite substantially, and you don't know you don't know who's telling you the truth and who isn't. The best rumour I ever heard out of Don't Flop was that um, was that Pedro is a classically trained penis, right? <laughs> I think I've heard that as well. Yeah. yeah, and I don't know if it's a Chinese whispers thing because I've tried to ask him about it, and he's kind of like he's sort of cagey on the matter. Ah. I don't know if he's like John sort of, Cagey. I don't know if he's feeding his uh, feeding his own myth or whatever. But um, mm. yeah, that's the uh, that's the rumor that I heard. Wow. 
Well, I yeah. mean, yeah, it's stranger things have happened, so yeah. I, I can't imagine. But Pete, um, this has been great, man. Thank you for thank you very much notes. indeed. Great, um, great pleasure to um, to speak to you. Uh, you know, I've been wanting to do it for a while. Yeah, no, of course. You're doing um, shout-outs to everyone. You know who you are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, how do people get at you? How do people find your writing? Okay, and, uh, um, if you if you do any any search on the Guardian website, you can find all the stuff that I've. Um, that I've done for for them on, on Don't Flop. There's about five five or six pieces. If you just do a search, Pete Cashmore, Don't Flop, it'll come up. So that's um, theguardian.com slash Pete Cashmore. Uh, Twitter, as we know, is Tweet Cashmore, not to be confused with Pete Cashmore, sure. who's the uh, the famous Mashable the guard. Mash, yeah. and, uh, and that's about it at the moment. Um, yeah, that's about it at the minute. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But Pete, um, this has been great then. Thank you for uh, coming Thanks, on, man. man. No worries. Thank you. Cheers.